Please let me be your child. Grandma. When I returned home, my five-year-old grandson was sitting on the doorstep in the sweltering heat of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. His face was flushed red, so I quickly brought him inside to cool down. It's a 30-minute walk from his house to mine, even for an adult. I couldn't believe he had come all the way on his own. Where are your mom and dad? I asked. They went to Hawaii. He replied. Shocked by his answer, I confirmed it and discovered that my son and his wife were indeed in Hawaii. I'll make them regret this. Enraged, I decided to take action against them. I've been married to my husband, who is the same age as me and runs a business, for 40 years. Our daughter and son are both married and have moved out, so it's just the two of us living together now. Our daughter, Ellis, lives about an hour away by car and has a family of three, including her husband and our eight-year-old granddaughter. Our son, Chris, lives about a 30-minute walk away with his wife, Grace, and their five-year-old son. Ellis often comes by car to visit and cheekily takes some of our dinner in food containers. Although our son lives close by, his wife, Grace, gives off the impression that she doesn't want us to be too involved in their lives. I clearly felt it on my grandson's fifth birthday. I called Grace, but it went to voicemail, so I left a message and went to my son's house. When I rang the doorbell, my daughter-in-law came to the door, but she had an obviously displeased expression on her face. What do you want? I left a message on your voicemail. But today is Jeff's birthday, so I brought a gift. Ha! Huh? Jeff's. For some reason, Grace looked up for a moment as if she was thinking. I then tried to hand her the cake I brought, but she refused to take it. The cake from this place is really delicious. The sponge is so soft. Jeff likes strawberries, so I thought he'd be happy. But before I could finish, her expression remained stern, and she sighed, giving me a look that felt almost like a glare. Maybe you've already prepared something? In that case, this was unnecessary. I said. No. Sweets cause cavities, so we don't let Jeff eat them. Please take it back. Her blunt tone left me bewildered but I figured she was just being cautious about our grandson's health, so I put the cake away. Then I tried to give her the Lego set I bought since Jeff had wanted it before, but this time she looked at me with an exasperated expression. We don't need such a trivial thing. Don't you understand it will just clutter up the room? Please, let me at least give it to Jeff directly. I want to say happy birthday to him. However, Grace never allowed me inside, nor did she let me see my grandson. She must really dislike me. Her feelings were so intense that they pierced through me. It's incredibly rude to buy things without knowing the circumstances of someone else's household. Next time you bring a gift, please make it cash. Goodbye. Before I could respond, she slammed the door shut with a loud bang. Expecting to see the joy on my grandson's face, I returned home with an overwhelming sense of emptiness. My husband noticed the cake box, my bags, and the disappointed look on my face. Why did you bring it back? He asked with a puzzled expression. After I explained my interaction with Grace, he said, That's going too far. You should contact Chris. Taking his advice, I called my son after I assumed he had finished work. What do you want? You haven't heard from Grace yet, have you? I brought a cake and a present today because it's Jeff's birthday. Oh. Really? I see. My son responded in a similar way to how Grace had, which puzzled me. 
As I recounted the conversation with Grace, my son suddenly became angry. What the hell were you thinking? We have our own way of raising Jeff. And honestly, buying a cake and a present without asking first, don't you think that's just plain rude? I never expected such a response, and I ended up being scolded by my son for what felt like an eternity, leaving me feeling dejected. After the call ended, I sat there with slumped shoulders. My husband kindly suggested, Since you bought it, let's eat the cake. As we shared the cake, I couldn't help but feel that what I did was just a nuisance. The sadness welled up inside me, and tears began to fall. My husband quietly handed me a tissue. I feel so pathetic, crying over something like this at my age. I couldn't shake the feeling that my son had changed, and my heart felt like it was being torn apart. Two weeks later, on another scorching hot day, I returned home from shopping to find a child sitting on the doorstep. As I got closer, I realized it was my grandson, Jeff. I immediately rushed over to him and asked, What's wrong? He looked up at me, drenched in sweat. Please let me be your child, Grandma. What? They said they don't want me. Jeff's face was bright red, and he looked unsteady, likely from sitting in the 100 degrees Fahrenheit heat for a while. I decided to ask him what happened later, and quickly brought him inside to cool down. I gave him a sports drink, which he drank eagerly, and gradually, the redness in his face started to fade. When I asked if he felt okay, Jeff smiled and said, I'm fine, which made me breathe a sigh of relief. Since it's a 30-minute walk from his house to mine for an adult, I couldn't believe he had come all this way by himself. Where could my son and daughter-in-law have gone? Where are your mom and dad? Did you get separated on the way here? No. They went on a family trip to Hawaii. What? What do you mean? They left without me. There was some bread they bought, but it went bad because it was so hot in the house. So I came to grandma's. Listening to this unbelievable story, I noticed that Jeff was wearing an adult-sized t-shirt that didn't fit him. The collar was stretched out, and his pants were quite dirty too. When did you change into those clothes, Jeff? A long time ago. It was when it started getting sunny more often. Um. As he counted on his fingers, it seemed like it might have been quite a while ago. I wanted to call my son immediately to find out what was going on, but my husband suggested. We should hear more from Jeff first. If Chris was nearby, he would have contacted us by now. I thought. So, I gave Jeff a lukewarm shower and his hair was so dirty that the shampoo wouldn't even lather. Filthy water ran off his body. He seems so thin. Were his ribs this visible before? As I gently washed him, trying not to hurt him, I noticed several small bruises on his arms and legs. Honey, could you bring me a bath towel? I gave my husband a look, and as he pretended to dry Jeff off, I had him check too. He was just as shocked. There were many bruises in places that didn't seem like they could have come from a fall. After his bath, I dressed Jeff in one of my husband's t-shirts, gave him some easy-to-digest food, and handed him the Lego set I had bought for his birthday. Wow. This is the one I wanted. Seeing Jeff jump for joy, my husband said, Grandpa will play with you. Let's see. Jeff, you're such a good boy. With a fond smile. Watching my grandson absorbed in his play, I couldn't shake off a nagging feeling, so I asked my husband to keep an eye on Jeff and went out to investigate something I needed to confirm. I headed to my son's house. Even after ringing the doorbell, no one answered. When I tried the doorknob, it opened easily. 
Jeff must have left it unlocked when he left. When I stepped inside, I was shocked by how dirty the place was. It didn't look like it had been cleaned at all. Clothes were draped over the sofa and chairs, and the floor was littered with empty bottles and snack wrappers. That's when I noticed a Hawaii travel guidebook on the table. As I flipped through it, I saw that various restaurants had been circled, and a travel contract was tucked inside. Maybe what Jeff said was true. To confirm this, I called my son. What do you want? Is Jeff doing well? Of course. He's running around here. When I asked where he was, he clearly replied that he was in Hawaii. It was obvious he was lying, but I pretended not to notice and said, that sounds like fun, before ending the call. After returning home, I fed Jeff dinner and asked him more about what had happened. Feeling safe, he started to tell me everything, revealing truths that were far beyond anything I had imagined. I see. So you were feeling so sad that you wanted Grandma to take you in? That's part of it, but I'm not really their child. They found me under a bridge. It turned out that these were the words my son and his wife had been telling him every day. I'm a burden to dad and mom, so I wanted to be your child. Jeff squeezed his hand tightly, and large tears began to fall from his eyes. I was at a loss for words, overwhelmed by how pitiful he looked, and I hugged him as tightly as I could. Grandma, you're so warm and smell so nice. He clung to me and started sucking his thumb. For him to still do this at five years old, he must have been incredibly lonely. Well then, Jeff, why don't you become Grandma's child? Grandpa said it's okay too. My husband nodded in agreement, wiping his tears with a towel around his neck, pretending to wipe sweat, saying, It's hotter than usual today. As I gently stroked Jeff's back, he seemed to relax. He fell asleep in my arms. Watching his peaceful sleeping face, my husband, tears streaming down his face, said, I can't believe such a little boy was carrying so much pain. As I pondered how to deal with my son and daughter-in-law, my daughter Ellis arrived, as she usually did. Seeing the tense atmosphere, she tilted her head in confusion, and that's when a brilliant idea struck me. Ellis, I have a favor to ask. After telling her everything that had happened, she immediately made a phone call. As she spoke, she made an OK sign with her fingers and smiled. They'll take care of it right away as a special service. With Ellis's help, things began to move quickly. All right. Everything's set. I'm ready for whatever comes next. And so, I eagerly awaited the return of my son and his wife from Hawaii. Three days later, I waited in a car parked near the house. Soon, a taxi passed by and stopped in front of my son's house. Out stepped my son Chris and his wife, Grace. They were carrying large suitcases and began looking around nervously. Then, they hurried over to a man working nearby with anxious expressions. Hey! What do you think you're doing? There was a house here. The man leveling the ground responded with a puzzled look. We demolished it. Chris's face turned bright red, and he grabbed the man's shoulder firmly. That's my house. Who gave you permission to do this? Let go of him. It was under my orders. I had it completely leveled. I stepped out of the car and walked briskly toward my son. Chris, standing there with his mouth agape, seemed like he wanted to complain, but I cut him off. Did you enjoy your romantic getaway to Hawaii while abandoning your child? What? While you were having fun in Hawaii, Jeff walked all the way to our house by himself. 
He told us everything. At first, my son and his wife had taken care of Jeff, but as he grew older, they began to see him as a burden. They fed him only snacks and instant noodles while they dined out regularly. They barely bought him any clothes, dressing him in Chris's old, worn-out t-shirts. And that's not all. What were you thinking, telling him he was a child you found under a bridge? Jeff was getting cheeky, so we just scared him a little. Then how do you explain this? I pulled out my smartphone and showed them photos of Jeff's bruised, emaciated body. Jeff had confided in me that Grace would pinch him whenever she was upset, which shocked me. That little brat. I'll deal with him later. Be quiet. What are you saying? It's a mother's job to punish her child when they do something wrong. Grace bit her lip in frustration, seemingly unaware of how cruel her actions were. She excused herself by saying that she had only given birth because she was pregnant, and that she never really liked children. She even said that kids were just a financial burden, making it clear that reasoning with her was pointless. As I grew more exasperated and tired of talking, Chris stepped in front of me, irritated. What's wrong with going to Hawaii as a couple? We deserve a break from parenting too. And who are you to say that when you barely took care of your child? Besides, just as I was about to continue, there was a loud bang as a door slammed shut, followed by the sound of someone walking briskly toward us. It was my daughter Ellis, who had gotten out of my car. If you don't want him, I'll raise him. She snapped, glaring at Chris. Immediately, Chris and Grace's faces lit up, and they rejoiced together, saying, that would be perfect. I wish we'd just given him to you in the first place, Ellis. The decision's made then. We're leaving now. Goodbye forever. Wait a minute. You tore down my house without permission, and you're just going to leave? Did you actually live there? It was a total dump. Backing me up, Ellis added. I was shocked at how filthy it was. But Chris and Grace, undeterred, shouted at me to give their house back. I think you're confused. The house belongs to me. They must have completely forgotten about such things. When they were getting married, they asked, if you're not using it, could we live there? So I let them stay, thinking that the house would be better maintained with someone living in it. After a moment, it seemed they finally remembered, as they both simultaneously put their hands over their mouths. What about all our stuff inside? You can't just throw it away. I put Grace's clothes that were thrown over the sofa and Chris's belongings in a storage unit. I showed them photos of the house before it was demolished, and Grace, clearly embarrassed, tried to snatch the phone from me. But I dodged her attempt and looked them both squarely in the eyes. You'll have to pay for the storage yourself. And just so you know, the furniture and appliances were mine, so I had them disposed of. How did you manage to tear down the house so quickly? That's impossible. When I told Ellis's husband about the situation, he found people who were available right away. Actually, my daughter's husband, Tony, runs a demolition company. Even though it was a lot to ask, Tony, who is a family man and loves children, immediately promised to help, saying, I won't stand for this. I'll get started right away. Chris and Grace had never imagined we would take such action. They dropped the bags they were holding and stood there in shock. At that moment, Tony arrived. I took care of it right away because it was a request from my mother-in-law, who always cooks delicious meals. So, Chris, how do you like my work? He flashed a big smile, 
showing his white teeth. When Tony grabbed Chris's hand for a firm handshake, Chris muttered, it hurts, under his breath. Compared to Tony, who does physical labor every day, Chris stood no chance. Realizing this, Chris couldn't bring himself to argue and looked at me, mumbling. Damn it. Where am I supposed to live now? Mom, do something. We don't have any savings. Astonishingly, they had spent all their earnings. On top of that, they maxed out their credit cards with their extravagant spending in Hawaii. Chris, nearly in tears, grabbed my arm and started to plead, using harsh words. There is a place you can live. Where? Without answering, I got into the car, and Chris and Grace hurriedly followed. I drove them to the house where my husband and I live and showed them to a room at the back. Their faces relaxed with relief, but I signaled my husband, who then made a phone call. After a while, I saw a car with red lights pull up in front of our house through the window. I've been expecting you. They're in this room, so please go ahead. I said as I flung the door open. Inside, Chris and Grace were lying down, relaxing. But when they saw the police officers enter, they were absolutely shocked. I found you a new place to stay. I said. What do you mean? You're being charged with abandoning your child to go on a trip to Hawaii. Not to mention, the abuse you inflicted on Jeff, denying him proper food and care. These are serious offenses. When the officers told them, We need you to come with us to the station. My son and daughter-in-law turned pale and began trembling. With tears streaming down his face, Chris clung to me, pleading. Please, I won't do it again. Just let us off this time. You're apologizing to the wrong person. I snapped. When they saw Jeff hiding behind me, Chris begged. Help your dad. While Grace added. No, Jeff, help your mom. Both trying to manipulate him with tears. Then, Jeff stepped out from behind me and extended his hand toward them. Officer, these two are mean to me. They're not my real parents. They just picked me up from under a bridge. The words struck them like a boomerang, leaving them speechless. When the officer gently asked Jeff, Can you tell us more about what happened later? Jeff replied, Yes. They used to pinch me hard. And showed the bruises on his arms and legs. Realizing they couldn't escape the truth, I stood before them, glaring. Apologize to Jeff right now. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Jeff, I promise I won't do it again. Please forgive me. Don't touch me. I'm going to live with Ellis's family now. Hearing this, Jeff moved closer to my daughter and her husband, clinging to them. Tony picked Jeff up, saying, Jeff, we'll protect you from now on. Then, turning to my son, Tony added, I can't stand bullies who pick on the weak. If anything else happens, I won't let it slide. Ellis, too, spoke up. Chris! You're the worst! How could you hurt such a sweet child? Jeff, thank you for becoming part of our family. She held Jeff's hand tightly. I'm glad we're all on the same page. This matter is now settled. Don't you dare come near Jeff or us again. With a surprisingly firm tone, I declared, and my son and his wife, heads hung low, were escorted away. After that, we submitted both Jeff's testimony and the photos I had taken, and my son and his wife admitted to their crimes and were found guilty. Although they avoided prison time, 
They were ordered to pay $20,000 in damages for the harm they caused Jeff. With their belongings still in the storage unit, the fees for that kept piling up daily and they were also inundated with credit card bills. My son and his wife are now living in a kind of hell on earth. Having lost their home, they might actually end up living under a bridge. Jeff was taken in by my daughter and her husband, and now they live together as a family of four with their daughter. As usual, my daughter comes by around dinner time, cheekily packing leftovers into food containers. And when two small hands suddenly reached out, Jeff and granddaughter were already munching on some fried chicken. My daughter playfully asked, Hey, can I have some too? Jeff, with a playful sigh, said, All right, fine. And popped a piece of chicken into Ellis's mouth. Recently, Jeff has started calling my daughter mom and Tony dad. My daughter told me that the first time Jeff called Tony dad, Tony was so happy he cried. Not only that, but their daughter was overjoyed to have a little brother and never leaves Jeff's side. Just like my daughter's family, I'm going to make sure that I shower Jeff with love and ensure he's happy. How did you like this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.